Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Mary's for Worship. We're so happy that you have joined us this morning. There's so much in the world today that we know we need, our need for God is deep, and the invitation to come and to be a part of a community is very important for all of us. So I invite you to set aside your concerns and worries for the moment and to come and to open your heart to truly receive in the depth of your being the Spirit of Christ. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Hebrew Bible, from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. And you should not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You should not hate in your heart anyone of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Thanks be to God. by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows on.
A reading from 1 Thessalonians, Paul's ministry in Thessalonica. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God, who tests our hearts. You know we never use flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise for people, not from you or anyone else. Even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we love you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. The word, the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. 
If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Help us, O oh Lord, to be masters of ourselves, that we might become the servants of others. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, here we go again. In this morning's Gospel reading, the Jewish authorities are once again challenging Jesus as he teaches in the temple during the last week of his life. We've been following their confrontations for the last several weeks. The authorities keep interrupting Jesus, setting rhetorical traps, hoping to get him to say something that they can use against him. They've asked him about authority, about the afterlife, and about taxes. And as we've seen, he has refused to answer their questions directly taking their inquiries in an entirely different direction, frustrating their attempts to trip him up, and furthermore, ter telling parables which accuse them of refusing to recognize God's anointed in their midst. So they gather together again, scratch their heads, and ask, what other leading question can they pose to Jesus? Then one of them, a lawyer, steps forward and casually asks, So, Jesus, can you tell us which of the commandments is the most important? Now, this may seem like a straightforward question. But the lawyer has a hidden agenda. He's trying to G draw Jesus into the heated debate among Jewish leaders about which of the 613 laws in the Covenant Code should have priority over all the rest. There are multiple ways that Jesus could step into this trap. For example, if he chooses the Sabbath law, the Pharisees could ask him why he see why he so frequently broke it. But, once again, Jesus sidesteps the Pharisees' treachery by refusing to choose a single law. Instead, combining two verses from the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, he affirms the foundation of all Jewish law. Love God with all your heart mind and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. The Pharisees are astounded. Jesus has won the battle of wits once again. They now get together with the priests and the elders to plot Jesus' demise. But the proclamation of these two great laws of love will become the heart and soul of the movement which the followers of Jesus inaugurate after his resurrection and ascension. Love is a tricky word in English. We use it in so many different ways. We say, I love my spouse. I love chocolate ice cream. I love the Seahawks. In Greek, there are four words that can be translated as love, eros, romantic love, storge, natural affection or fondness, philia, friendship or brotherly love, and agape, unconditional love. 
each word denotes a different orientation that one can have towards something or someone. Each expresses a different level of feeling. But in scripture, love is more than a feeling. It is a commitment that is expressed in action. In this passage, Jesus uses the word agape in speaking about our love of God and our love of neighbor. It's the highest form of love that needs to be expressed in both what we say and what we do. A question that we might ask is, how do we express our love for God and others with this agape form of love? Expressing our love for God is trickier than we might imagine. We could say that we show our love for God through prayer and worship. But prayer and worship benefit us more than they benefit God. God doesn't need our praise or petitions. We do. Instead, we show our love for God by participating in God's plan for the restoration of the creation, by following God's call to each of us. This involves listening deeply to God, who speaks to us through that small inner voice that gives direction and meaning to our lives. This means that we have to be open to allowing God to intervene in our lives in unforeseen and inconvenient ways. It's been said that the easiest way to make God laugh is to go, tell God your five-year plan. Obeying God's call to us may be challenging, but it will always be pleasing to God. In one of his most famous quotes, Thomas Merton once wrote, My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. Expressing our love for God with agape involves being vulnerable, just as Jesus allowed himself to be vulnerable to suffering and a shameful death. By being attentive to God's call we open ourselves to experiencing God's kingdom as it unfolds in our midst. Expressing love for our neighbor with agape is something else again. The Greek word which we translate as neighbor has a wider application than simply geographical closeness. Both in the text of Leviticus and in the restatement of Jesus, the word means all people. So we tend to express our regard for others in a variety of ways. We have one way for family and friends, one way for mere acquaintances, one way for those whom we encounter casually, and another way for people whom we don't actually know. Agape, however, doesn't make these distinctions. The only difference that it allows is the degree to which we reach out to others. The unifying quality of agape love is compassion, the ability to stand with and suffer, the root meaning of the word, to suffer with others. It may be easy to show compassion to those who we love and cherish. What we often find hard is being compassionate towards strangers 
especially if they seem to be radically different than us. Yet this might be the most important part of loving others. Throughout his life and ministry, Jesus stood with those who are, were on the margins of his society. He ignored the rules about observing the Sabbath to heal the lame and the disabled. He violated purity laws by laying hands on lepers, the sick, and the deceased. He associated with outcasts and forgave notorious sinners. And he reached out to women and foreigners. In our day, we have a similar list of marginalized and oppressed people. The, spit, the sick, especially those without health insurance, the disabled, the dying, people of color, members of the LBGTQ community, immigrants, the poor, and those living on the economic margin. So how do we express agape for, law, for those people in these groups? We have many opportunities to extend compassion to them. We can pray for them. We can work with service and advocacy groups such as food banks and immigration advocacy groups. We can support relief and development through such agencies as Episcopal Relief and Development. We can contact government officials advocating for those who don't have a voice of their own. Expressing agape love may seem like an added burden during this time of stress and anxiety. But listening to God and expressing compassion to others may actually lessen our pain. Our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, recently wrote, God's rubric of love shows us the way through these tumultuous times. Informing them, transforming them rather, into something closer to the kingdom of God on earth. Indeed, the question we should be asking is, how can unselfish, sacrificial love get us through what we are facing and bring us to a better place? The love I'm talking about isn't a feeling, it's a choice. And it's one we make over and over every day of our lives. In spite of the many crises that we face, we still have choices to make. Perhaps the most important choice for disciples of Jesus is follow, how to follow him in the way of love. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, 
the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Bishop Greg, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. As we prepare for our upcoming elections, pray that all who wish to vote may be allowed to do so. Pray for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for all in authority, for the President of the United States, for the Governor of Washington, for our Mayor, for our Police Department, for the Fire Department, for all paramedics and first responders, for all frontline workers who serve in our hospitals. Pray for all who serve the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I ask your prayers for an end to prejudice and violence, for those who protest in the cause of justice, for all striving to end sin or racism in our world. Pray for the beloved community. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I ask your prayers for the sick, the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, for those in prison, for those who have asked for our prayers, Bob Lokama, Liana, Ruth, Kathy, Doris, Aaron, Annette, Mary, Terry, Eric, Linda, Bill, Ada, Anne, Jean, and Barb. For all who suffer from famine, drought, or diseases. For Leslie. For Samantha. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may be found and find him. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I ask your prayers for our stewardship campaign. Pray that we might all work together to build the kingdom of God. As we hear the stories of those who have given to build our parish community, may each of us feel that same call. Pray for our parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those who have died violently or have taken their own lives, and for our family, friends, and neighbors who have died during the pandemic. Pray for those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary and whom and all whom we remember today. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. Happy birthday, Teddy. Thank you. <laughs> what number is it? Well, it's a big number this year, nine, six. 96? Teddy, nobody believes that. <laughs> well, I just got off the golf course. I just walked nine holes and I'm still upright, so I guess everything's okay. <laughs> wow, good for you. What are you going to do for your birthday? Oh, I have some very dear neighbors who invited me for dinner and then my son from Portland and his gang will show up at some point, some of them anyway, I would expect. But uh, it'll, it'll, there'll be something going on, and it'll, it'll be fine. So of those 96 years, how many years have you been a member of St. Mary's? Well, I was here, my husband was stationed here when we were in the, in the early 60s, so we were here for three years at that point, and we were stationed out of a Ford, and then we got to Germany and so forth and so forth. We came back here after he retired, and that was in 1967. So we bought our house, and we've lived down there in that, that house for the last... What is it, 50, 52 years now, I guess. Wow, you are um, a champion of St. Mary's. What's your favorite memory of St. Mary's all those years? Oh, golly. Uh, I, think the, I think probably I've, I, the, the church itself is wonderful. I mean, I, I, I miss it sorely right now, and I'm hoping it'll open up again soon. But uh, I miss the companionship. I miss the reading of the, of the thing and, and really spending some time with the Lord and, and it's hard to do when you're by yourself and at home. I do. I give a, I watch the Mar St. Mary's service every Sunday and it's on and uh, I spend time quietly reading the messages and so forth but I do miss the people being around them and so on. We used to have this, the supper club every third Friday night and we all became very good friends. We have 60 and 70 people attend that. And it was absolutely wonderful. Everybody, everybody brought something, and, and we were all just good friends. And, and you'd meet the new people, and, and they were immediately brought right into the circle. And so it, it, it's just always been a place where I have felt at home, and where I, I feel like I've had have had and have so many friends. Well, Teddy, you are a treasure to St. Mary's and anyone who knows you. So happy birthday! Have a great year. Thank you. I hope so. I might be back here next year to tell you about it. <laughs> I sure hope so. Thanks a bunch. Maybe we'll be in person, though. Next year we'll be in person. Okay. Happy birthday, Joan. Thank you, Beth. How old are you uh, this birthday? I will be 87. 87? <laughs> yes. Wow. What are you going to do on your um, birthday this year? This year, my youngest son, Paul, and his wife, Peggy, and their 15-year-old son, Liam, are coming down to my house. Peggy's bringing brunch, and we're going to have a nice breakfast. And I think my other son, John, and his son, Malachi, will be there as well. So it would be a gay day. I love having my family around, and everybody is healthy, so I don't worry about the virus. Excellent. So are you having dessert with brunch? I didn't even ask Peggy. I just said, <laughs> what can I bring? And <laughs> being at my house. And she said, how about coffee? I said, that's good. 
Okay, if it was a if it was a different time of day, it or you matter. had a you it wouldn't matter. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Dessert is any Dessert time of day. Dessert is any time of day, and my absolute favorite breakfast is would be um, blackberry pie oh. for breakfast. Uh, but we will probably not have that. I love pie. That's my favorite dessert. And berry pie is probably my favorite kind of pie. Do you have a good recipe for that? I need it. No, but I have the world's greatest pie crust recipe. Oh, can I get that? I would be delighted to share that with you. Okay, I might share it with the congregation. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Well, happy birthday to you. Thank I hope you. you have a great uh, birthday and a great year ahead. Thank you, God willing. Joan, let's pray. Let me, gracious God, I ask you to be with Joan. Give her the strength, the courage, and the wisdom that she needs for the year ahead. And help her to grow closer to you in the midst of this time where we are all drawn into new spaces. Bless her on her birthday, and we give deep thanks for her life and for her presence in our midst. Amen. 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 Bless you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be among you and remain with you always. Thank you, Mary. God bless. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary. How many years has it been? Not enough. <laughs> that's, that's one thought. 27. 27. <laughs> so what is a tip for a happy marriage? Vote for the same political party. <laughs> Vote blue. Happy wife equals happy marriage. That's all there is to it. So whatever she wants. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Let us pray. Watch over Watch your over children, O Lord, Lord, as their, their days, days increase. increase. Bless, Bless and guide them, them wherever, wherever they may be. Strengthen, Strengthen them, them when they stand. Comfort, comfort them, them when discouraged or sorrowful. sorrowful. Raise, Raise them up if they fall. And in, in their, their hearts, hearts may your peace, peace which passes understanding, abide, abide all the days of their, their lives. lives. Through Jesus, Through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you always. Claire and Judy, here you are going to Las Vegas for the winter. Yep, we're doing snowboarding. Yeah, um, any extra money? <laughs> <laughs> Wait until the, the pledge kit fades over with. Okay. <laughs> Don't put yeah. that in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cop run us over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my family's down there, and so we're going. To, what we're doing is splitting, you know, part of the year with my family and part of the year with here with Claire's, and we're sort of dividing it up. That's great. It felt a really need to sort of connect with family again yeah. with everything going on. So that's good. That's good. I hear that the Seahawks games are also um, televised down there, so you yeah, can yes, still they, watch them. <laughs> they better be. Yeah, they better be. Just don't start rooting for Las Vegas. That's all I ask. <laughs> because yeah. you would be violating your soul if you did that yeah. on very deep levels. Anyway, yeah. well, we wish you all the best. Thank you. And um, we know the weather down there is good. Yeah. And that... Hopefully you will um, get the rest you need and, and heal in any way you need to. So and it's always good to be with you. Yes, so it is. This family will miss you. Oh, um, yeah. But we are still available on Zoom. We're not any closer here than if you're there. So, you know, we could still do that. And as we've well. been doing Zoom, so I'm watching. That's good. Yeah, we're watching. So that's good. Good, good, yeah. good. good. Yeah. Or, well, uh, yeah. Let me bless you. Okay. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular Claire and Judy. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
remain with you and be with you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Great to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, St. Mary's. Lindsay Schuster here. Thank you for a moment of your time as we talk about our opening pledge drive. Haven't we just had a year? Lots of uncertainty and concern, not much routine or stability. I grew up in a military family and we traveled the world. Lakewood and St. Mary's was always our home. As a child, I recall watching the sanctuary being built. Teenage years were spent at EYC. Live bands played at the church dances. Confirmation classes were held in the rector's office, which was right here. Later, my children were baptized at the font. Through the years, I've come and gone from the parish, but St. Mary's Church has always been my spiritual home, my stable home through years of change. As 2020 comes to a close, and some people might say a blessed close, I ask you to consider the stability of our faith and our parish. The altar stands fast. Jesus is always here. Please give prayerful thought to your financial support of the parish, particularly as we seek a new rector. Let's build a sound budget to move forward in ministry. Remember the words of our Lord, for where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Also remember the words of Isaiah, wear a mask, wash your hands, get your flu shot, and send your pledge card in. Not necessarily in that order. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. The diocese will gather in convention the next couple of days, and in addition to talking about the normal business of the diocese, we'll be focusing in on two important issues. One is what it means to be a church in the middle of a pandemic, and also racial justice. Two important issues that I'm sure our, the team will bring back to you um, information about what happened um, in the weeks to come. Also, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, and we, if you'd like to have a loved one included in our slideshow or necrology, um, feel free to send a picture to Beth Bowen. The best way to do that is to take a picture of your loved ones and send the picture of the picture to Beth. Um, and then she will include it and make sure that you also include the names of the people of the picture that you sent. So we need those pictures by October 25th in order to get it put together. Um, also, later in the month, on November 14th, we will be having a Blue Jean Saturday, hosted by Donna Pelkey, um, our gardener extraordinaire. And if you can help, this will be a socially distanced masked um, event. So grab your tools and call Donna and let her know that you will be coming. Um, again, that's on November 14th and you'll be hearing more of information about that in the weeks to come. In addition to our regular online um, offerings that we have during the week, as you recall, we have morning prayer on Monday, Bible study on Tuesday, contemplative prayer on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and book group this coming Friday. Um, we also are gonna be offering some short prayer services leading up to the election. Um, the Episcopal Church has called upon its congregations to offer, prayer, to offer prayers during this time. So we have a variety of options for you. Um, starting on October 27th at seven o'clock and continuing nightly through November 4th, uh, we will be offering on Zoom a short nightly prayer service which we have created. Um, here at St. Mary's, we will be using um, a sh short set of nine services, and we'll be using some of the resources from the National Church, as well as Evening Prayer and Compline. So 
if you're interested in parish posts, there will be the Zoom links. Um, and if you don't have Zoom, um, you can also access the material or access the services via Facebook Live. Um, the Facebook Live will be live at seven o'clock on those particular days. Um, so anyway, it will be great to have you join us. Um, each service will be recorded as well and posted um, to the church webpage that you can watch later. So all you'll need is some sort of device and um, a candle to light and a prayer in your heart. So I hope you will join us. Meanwhile, stay safe and God bless and we will see you soon. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, joining with the angels and archangels, with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power, power and might, and might heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the in highest. highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to the, 
death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. And the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from this creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, forgive and forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against, against us. us. And lead and us, us not into temptation, temptation but deliver, but deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Holy things for holy people. In union, union O Lord, o Lord with, the with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer your praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech, I beseech you to you come, come spiritually, spiritually into my heart. I unite, I unite myself, myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing, nothing ever separate, separate you from me. From me. May, May I live and die in, in your love. love. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And, and now, now, Father, Father send, send us out, out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>